If you want to make your picture frames come to life, this is the video for you. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this amazing picture frame effect in DaVinci Resolve. My name's Dan, and you're watching Dan Vinci. Let's go. Alright then, with that all out of the way, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. But just before I do that, I want to tell you that the two shots I'm going to be using in this video are in the description. So if you want to follow along, you can. So like my last video, I have two clips. The first clip is a video of a picture frame on a table that I shot. Now if you're wondering what the weird patterns are in the picture frame, don't worry, it's not like Illuminati, weird, strange, silver foil on your head malarkey. That is a tracking texture that I downloaded and then printed and then just put in the picture frame. This will make things way easier because what we're going to be doing is tracking later on. And then the second shot is someone just turning around and looking at the camera. Making sure you're hovering over the footage that you want to track, go down to the bottom here and click on Fusion. Now this will open your Fusion page. Now don't worry if this is a little bit scary to you, I'm going to be going step by step for you. If you follow every step that I do, you shouldn't get too lost. Making sure you're on frame zero, the first step you want to do is click Control Space. This will open your Select Tool search bar. This is effectively how you search for all the nodes. Once this is open, search search tracker. Once you've searched tracker, four different options will appear. We're going to be using the planar tracker, so that's the second one. Clicking this, click add, and it will apply it to your fusion tree. Now don't worry if it's appeared like this, all you need to do is click the line here and it will deselect, everything will go black, don't worry. Then clicking the square here, drag it over to planar tracker and then click the square on the planar tracker and click it to media out and then everything will appear. The planar tracker node is now in your fusion tree. Now what we want to do is select the area of the frame that we want to track and this is where the tracking texture comes into play. Zooming in by holding control and scrolling on your scroll wheel, you'll be able to find the corner here, click on here, and it'll create a point. Now go down to the other corner, just click another point, and it'll create a line, and then just keep on going, and you'll see where I'm going with this. There you go. And then just click on the first point that you created, and boom, it's now created a nice square. So within this square, everything is going to be tracked. So now what we want to do, making sure we're on frame zero, is go into the inspector tab in the top right corner. Don't worry if it's not open, just click this little button here, and it will appear then you want to click set this is going to set the reference frame that the tracker is going to use while it tracks then just click this little arrow button here and it will start tracking your video once again if you want to use this footage i've linked it down in the description below so you can follow this exactly as i'm doing it great so it's tracked what now so now that we're in the edit page our attention is going to go to the turning around shot what we need to do is create two copies first holding alt drag up and create an identical copy of the turning around shot or whatever shot you're using now now that we have this copy, let's jump into the color tab. We're going in all the tabs today. I will be back in five seconds while I fill up my drink. I have drink. All right, so we're in the color tab. What we want to do is use the magic mask. Now, if you don't know anything about the magic mask, I would thoroughly suggest that you watch my video on it. It was actually my first video on the channel and it got like 8,000 views. So I don't really know how that happened, but it's in the description. Feel free to take a look because I explain it very well. At least I think I did. It was a long time ago. Click on this little icon here. This is your magic mask. What we're going to do is just go to the first frame here. Maybe let's find a frame where just everything is in shot and everything's sharp because the camera does go out of focus a little bit here. So let's go here. Perfect. Right, so what we're going to do is make sure that the magic mask is set on better. This is so that we get a better quality finish, really. And then if we click on this little eye drop here with a plus, this is going to be our select tool so that we can select all the things that we want in frame. So if we go over to the frame here, drag and draw a line around our object that we want to well be tracked in place. There we go. It's isolated and just kept the person in the frame. Now what we want to do is track this. So similar to before, just click the arrow here, click play, and it will start tracking. Now it will be a little bit slower than your planar tracker because it's doing quite a bit, but be patient, you'll get there in the end. Brilliant, now that it's tracked, you'll see that there's a blue line in your timeline, but then the person will disappear. That's fine, just click play backwards and it will track backwards and do the exact same thing, but in reverse. And there we have it, we've now tracked the magic mask. The last step is to just add the alpha output in the node tree area. If you don't know how to do this, that's fine. Just go into the top right corner, make sure your node tree is open by clicking this button here, click in the area here, click add alpha output. This will add a little blue dot, then just connect up the blue square on your node 
node that you've just been adding the magic mask to and drag it over to your alpha output. Now let's go back into our edit page. Now if we disable the shot underneath the shot that we've just edited, it should look like this. And by the way, you can disable it just by clicking D, but this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. Now let's render this in place so it runs a little bit better on my computer. Obviously, if you guys have super powerful computers, then you won't need this, but I'm gonna do it, because why not? Right click on your clip, click render in place, and I'm gonna render it in GoPro cine form. Click render, find a place where you wanna render it, and then you sit here and wait. This video has been officially interrupted by Audio. Today's video sponsor. Audio is a budget-friendly, royalty-free site that gives you access to a massive library of sound effects and music that not only sounds really good, but genuinely, from my own personal experience, doesn't actually sound royalty-free. Once you've subscribed, any of the music or sound effects that you download while you're subscribed are your to keep forever. Basically, let's say you download 150 songs or 200 songs for 200 various projects and then you cancel your subscription. That little audio music sound effects library that you've built up, well, you don't have to delete it. It's always yours. What I genuinely personally quite like about audio is the fact that one, their website is actually fairly easy to navigate. There's a lot of other competitors of theirs that are just messy. They sent me a link, which I'm going to put in the description that you can follow and put in the code Dan Vin for 70% off your first year of Audio Pro. So we'll go from 199 to this, 59. Madness. But otherwise, let's jump back into it. All right then, so now that that's rendered in place, let's re-enable the shot underneath by clicking D again, and then the background will reappear, just like magic. Okay, so now that we've prepared everything in our timeline, it's time to actually apply this effect to the frame. I would recommend making sure that you put all the footage in a bin folder in your media pool like this, so that you know exactly where it is, because you'll need this for the next step. Okay, so now you need to jump back into Fusion on the clip that you applied the planar tracker to. Okay, so now that we're back here, what I want you to do is go to the top left corner and go over to this little button here, the media pool. Click on this and it'll open up the same sort of page you had in your edit tab potentially because it usually open by default. And let's find the footage now. So what we want to do is we want to drag down the turning around shot. Perfect. Okay, so now what we want to do, now that we have the turning around shot or whatever shot that you're using, we want to drag the output and apply it to the planar tracker. Ah, nothing's happening. Happened. I forgot a step. Brilliant, this is embarrassing. This is fine. There is a step that I've missed. Click on the planar tracker, go up to the top right corner in the inspector tab and click on operation mode. Here you'll see there's a drop down tool. If you go down to corner pin, click on this, it will then apply it into the frame. Now you'll get this funky square that you need to edit. That's fine. All you need to do is click the corners, drag it around and just make sure it fits and doesn't look like a squashed person from Mario Kart. We want to make sure the frame fits but doesn't fit. The idea is that the subject pops out of the frame. So what we want to do is actually move these points to a point where the head is actually above the edge of the frame. It's not usually what you do. And I mean, you can just track this in inside the frame if you want, but I'm adding a little step to just to go that little bit further and add a little bit of spice and creative flair. Creative. Okay, so now that I've moved the frame using the planar tracker corner points, and I'm pretty happy with this framing, try and get a similar framing to me, just like this. Go over to the, your media pool in the top left corner and find the shot that you rendered out using the magic mask. Drag this down here, like so, and then just clicking on the output here, drag it over to the output of the media two, and boom, it'll create a merge node. Now, it may look like nothing's happened. Just wait a second. Here's where it gets cool. Clicking on your media two, let's click on this button here to create a square rectangle. This will act like a mask, and as you can see, it's cut out the background. This is fantastic, and it looks so cool already. Just a few minor adjustments left to go. I just received some chips, so I'm now gonna eat chips while I make the video. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm loving it. Okay, so now clicking on your rectangle, in your fusion tree. Click these little controls here and just drag it around until you get it bang on the edges of the frame. So what we want to do and aim for is not to have any of this tracking texture. And there we have it, a really, really simple but effective effect that really hasn't taken too long. Do let me know if this effect intrigues you, whether you've tried it yourself and how it went. But yeah, that's basically it. So my name's Dan, you watch Dan Vigi, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah, go cry.